that are we are we, are we ready to move? Hello. Yeah, and yeah. Amber. You know what nice about this? Like it, your voice actually sounds like it should be like on radio. Like, well, mine. Voice is, does. I don't know about yours. Voice does. Mine. I know. Yeah, mine. Um, are you ready? So, are you ready? Big boss. And on that note, welcome to the Long Grass Podcast. The Footwitch Crew is back in the flesh. Like first time three of us been in a room since about May. Yeah. Literally, I think maybe even June at a push. Yeah, that sounds about right. So uh welcome gentlemen. And we are we've got a new home. We are come a long way since sitting in a, in, a, in a pub. But uh this is the new yeah, this is the new the new the new home for the Long Grass Podcast. So we're gonna be coming out from, from here weekly. Um and yeah, hopefully it's gonna sound a lot better, look a lot better. Hopefully we're gonna start having guests in here as well. And uh yeah, I think I think I think we can operate. Yeah, I, I feel important. I don't know about you. Guys. Yeah, no, we've come a long way since the previous venues. I mean, we're not asking guys to turn the music down at Molly's anymore. So the only problem is we can't get beer here. Like we can't just have someone bringing beer as we as we do this. Yeah, there's obviously pros and cons, but you got to take your your wins with your losses. But uh, I think to have a proper place to do this is for all the horse scenery in the background. I think. Hey, yeah. dude. Nothing wrong, nothing wrong with a few horses. They just cost, I mean, to be fair, horse and golf, two of the most expensive hobbies in the in the world. We're speaking about a lot of losses and some Ws throughout the rest of the podcast. Right, coming up over the next sort of 45 minutes to half an hour, we're going to be t- speaking about the DP World Tour. It was the BMW PGA Championships the past weekend. The GOAT, Larry coming away with the, with a win. A lot of uh, tension between the live players and the PGA and DP World Tour players. We're going to be talking about uh, the Sunshine Tour, um, Fenzel getting a win over down in Selborne. And then we're going to talk about a couple of other things. Uh, we're going to talk about the fact that Team USA is probably going to walk over to the international team in about half a day. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we'll talk a little bit about uh, certain people's family members doing, well, keeping the family name alive whilst the others just bring it down through their drunken debauchery <laughs> in the various places in, in Europe. So um, first of all, chaps, are we well? Any good golf? Any any golf over the weekend? How was how was the things? Jimmy, you're always playing golf, Paris. So how were you, how were your rounds this weekend? Yeah, I think we know how my rounds went. So first time I uh, haven't uh, done the double header on a Saturday Sunday. Uh, just played the Saturday. Uh, fresh holotined greens at uh, Kilani at the moment, so I was battling a bit of adversity, but it actually helped the putter. So <laughs> I think uh, I should do the do the holotonic more often. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm sure you guys know how that round went. I don't know if it's time to chat about that or if that's a cliffhanger for the end. No, I think we'll, we'll bring it in the end. We'll talk about some, some bad, massive losses then we'll end up with the biggest L of the day. Yeah, yeah. So there's, there were some people that there was, I think someone on the sunshine tour shot 81 and 80 over this last weekend, like, but way over par and everything like that. And he's still not the person who took the biggest L in South African golf. This <laughs> You might have taken the biggest L in golf. Yeah. Yeah. So we are, we'll save that cliffhanger for the end, but it's yeah. a cracker of a story. And, and yeah, it just gets sadder the more you hear it. Well, we're looking forward to it. And Ross, too, too busy gallivanting in, in Cape Town watching Sevens to play any golf, eh? Yeah. I switched to rugby for the weekend. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I could see you in the Sevens circuit. Yeah. yeah. Short, quick. Yeah, just with water in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> On the field. <laughs> and maybe like outside the stadium. Yeah. Selling it to people. But apart from that, you're basically a Sevens player. But uh, speaking of uh, players, we had the PGA Championship, and we spoke last week about the tension that we were going to see yeah. between the players and the live golfers, the PGA Tour champions. And I think that it was quite interesting to see the, the different sort of extents that we saw people not being happy with the golfers. And I think that some people got it right, some people got it wrong. I personally think that, that Rory is really pushing the, the anti live golf agenda. It's almost like not even believable. Stuff. We are. Um, it's killing me now, Steve. Like I'm seeing the same story with with Rory, and you know it, it goes just further than what Rory's doing. I mean, I see it on the PGA Tour now. All of a sudden, they're desperate to push how much money Scotty Scheffler's made, and they're desperate to push how much money all these guys are making and whatnot. And I'm like, it's so obvious your anti-live agenda that it's actually lame. Like if it was like a genuine attempt or whatever, like it, it's just so obvious anti-live that you're ruining your own content and the own sort of like narrative of your own story that. You're just so desperate to bash these guys down. And it's the same for Rory. Like you've seen him the whole weekend. He's been saying he's going to have a problem with live guys. They shouldn't be here. And there's other guys that should be in their spot. And it's like, it's the same story. Like it's so obvious anti-live that it's actually like, it's looking bad on all these people that are going for anti-live golf, in my opinion. Yeah. And it's getting to the point now where every single headline you see is 
Rory says this about Liv, Rory says that about Liv, and it is, it's old news now. Like, we know Rory doesn't like the Liv guys. We know he, does, that he doesn't want them on the PGA Tour and the European Tour, DP World Tour. I think somebody who did go about it well this week was John Rahm. I don't know if you mm. guys saw his interview, but he handled it quite nicely, I felt. And he's not, like, when he was asked about it, he wasn't like, I hate the Live guys, they shouldn't be here. He spoke professionally about it. So yep. what did he say? Because I didn't he, hear what Ron... He was He was say. sort of like, he was, he, was, he was quite new. I mean, he obviously doesn't like it. You know, he said that he doesn't really agree with the tour stuff like that. But he said, you know, there are certain players who, who did their time. Um, and spoke about the fact that there were a lot of players who who played, and I think he, I think was he the one that said, you know, even Patrick Reed, who's somebody that a lot of people don't particularly like, he says, you know, he played on the European tour, he played a lot on the tour. A lot of these guys gave up their time, you know, they helped the, they helped grow the tour, they did their time, um, and now they sort of moved on. He says, so he doesn't, he doesn't mind them being there because he feels like they've they've earned their place at at um, the PGA Championship and the European tour stuff like that because they 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 gave a lot to the tour. His issue was more the sort of the younger or the or the. Uh, the Taylor Gooch, the Abraham, yeah, the Abraham answer, the guys who have I don't think have ever played a European tour event now coming to the European tour's flagship event when they've never been there to support the tour. Um, and he said that irritated them because there were guys sitting on the cusp of the field who could have got in if the likes of the live guys weren't there, such as Taylor Gooch, Abraham answer, um. Ducky reference one he it might have been a bit biased, but he had a really good friend who was first reserve for this week. And he's I think he's in the top five in the race to Mallorca. And he's playing the European circuit. Um and he lost a position in the BMW because of Taylor Gooch and them and the live guys, which is understandable. Uh, but yeah, he also like with reference to some of the live guys, he never mentioned names, but he said there were three of the live guys that have played in at least between the three of them they've played in at least 70 bmw pgas before and so they do in a sense have the right to be there so now here's my thing right so rory was saying the same sort of thing that a lot of players have missed out on playing in this mm. flagship event because of all these live guys that shouldn't be there but who should be there ahead of the live guys i mean have the live guys not earned their right to be on the tour just because they haven't played in the the DP tour doesn't mean that they don't, haven't earned the right to be there based off performances and how good they are at golf. Like you don't just rock up to the BMW PGA Championship at one point or another in time. You earned your right to be there. I suppose it would be the people who earned their exemption to the PGA through the PGA Tour, for example. So if you had if you had played on the PGA Tour and then you got your entry into the the event last week, which is a DP World Tour event on the European Tour. Um, but then you've gone to live, which means that you've quit PGA Tour type thing. I think that's probably where where, where the argument is, is the fact that they use PGA Tour to qualify for the European, the DP World Tour event, then quit the PGA Tour to go to live, but are now still using that that link there, which I suppose you know, to a certain degree you can sort of understand that. I think it's a bit different to players who are already playing on the DP World Tour because players in the DP World Tour, there's a whole, there's a whole court case going on, but they haven't been kicked out of the DP World Tour yeah. yet. You know, some of them were suspended, they appealed the suspension, I think it was the Scottish Open, that was the yeah. whole, um, some players were, you know, the court interdict came and said they had to play. Um, and I think that John was, Ram was also saying that he felt that certain players were just there to disrupt things, yeah. you know, that they weren't really there to just come and play the event, they were there to try and be hostile, to be disruptive, um, you know, where he said that certain other, other people who you know, he was saying that he's, he's his friends sort of came on and carried on. You know, he's talking about Sergio Garcia, who we'll talk about because he's under quite a lot of scrutiny at the moment. Yeah. You know, there were people there, he said, who, who did their time, gave a lot to the tour, and he says he's got no problem with them being there. You know, they earned their stripes. They've, they've always supported the tour in the past, and, and so they've sort of earned their right to be there. So, yeah, I think that's probably more where he, he feels that people were, who left the PGA Tour, which was their sort of stepping up to grace, now going off across the DP World Tour um, because they can play a DP World Tour where they can't play on the PGA Tour is probably, I think, where his main sort of grab came in. Um, I quite like Lowry's sort of approach. Again, you know, he, uh, he he sort of spoke about some of the fact that he didn't like some of them were there, but he could sort of understand it. But I think that he he was a little bit less about, um, you know, on the good live until he won. Yeah. And uh, he said that this wins for the good guys. So interesting to sort of just, just to sort of throw that, dangle it out there. Um, but we saw a lot of drama. I mean, we all saw um, Billy Horschel and... Um, Alter. Alter. Yeah. 
and you'll have to be able to hear what the exchange was about and how much you always look at those things and you think, you know, is it actually that deep? Do you think, I mean, for all we know, it, could, it might not even been a live argument. Yeah, you know? no, they yeah. could have been chatting about Arsenal. I mean, yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, it could have just been some, yeah, they could, they could have been a, a very different thing. But I think what the frustrating thing is at the moment is just everything is live with lives well. PGA, yeah. I mean, Lowry wins the PGA Championship, you know, big win in his career, big money, really good performance. And when the second, third question is winner's interview, it's... Yeah, so there's a lot of live tour stuff. I get. How do you feel doing it? You know, and I think it's just getting sad that it's just, it's just, it's dominating the narrative. There is no non live golf narrative at the moment. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, for me personally, I, I said it last week, I really enjoy the narrative of it. Like, for once, we're getting a, a completely different narrative to what we've seen this entire time in golf. Like, it's usually just all about the individual, all about this. But now you're looking at, like, I, I don't want to say a team concept, but it kind of is, you know, like I was sitting there this weekend and I was watching and I've never supported Patrick Reed a day in my life until this weekend. And I'm oh. like, come on, live. You so, you're, so, you're, so you were on the live, the live golf, the train in terms of I who just, you wanted to win. I was like, what kind of commotion is it going to stir if one of these live guys wins? I mean, imagine Patrick Reed won. And I mean, obviously Tyler Gooch did better at the end of it. But I mean, like what a character that was disliked in the PGA over at live wins the tournament. Like, how do you think everyone would have felt? Like, can you imagine that? Can you imagine Rory after that? It would have been a nightmare. So I personally, I've been enjoying it. And as I said, like, I wasn't just supporting Patrick. I was supporting all the live guys just because I wanted to see the chaos that it would ensue. Like, it's it's a, it's a new narrative to golf that we've never seen yeah, before. Full, full disclosure, it. if anybody from Live Tour is is out there, DeBarros is definitely for sale. Yeah, yeah. No, I, uh, I think he's 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 drawn his battle lines. and he's, I'm basically he's... a brand ambassador. <laughs> I, I saw the Live Cap merch there. If I could like, get it to the side, I would. There we go. Well, I think maybe we should. I think we should. I'm, yeah. When's your birthday? November. Lacquer. I saw, funny enough, speaking about like the Live merch um, on Instagram the other day, I was like going through the Bushveld tour and they played at Eagle Canyon this weekend. One of their guys has a Live towel on his Ooh, bag. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge, pick me up. Which is quite interesting. I'm surprised that he's even, a, well, I guess he's not really Ed. Not so I was going to say, I would be surprised if any of the tours allow any sort of Live merch. On yeah. Well, Asian tour is partnering with Live. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, so, I bought the Asian tour. I'm, yeah. sure they've, I'm sure they reached out to every tour. I wouldn't mm. be surprised if they even reached out to South African tour or whatever. Like they I have to. Know. I mean, there's so many South African golfers. So many. That, that, that get produced here. As I said, I, if, I was, if I was in the Sunshine Tour, I would say, listen, this is the price. You want to, you come, you come invest this sort of money in and we'll walk. Yeah, we yeah. talk, we'll talk real good. Yeah. You know? um, but in terms of the actual golf, because there actually was some golf being played over the weekend, uh, Lowry, um, yeah, what a, what a, what a, what a performance. And uh, what was quite interesting was speaking to him afterwards was, was he spoke about from a mental thing, like how many things were going through his mind, going down that back nine, the fact that he'd been there before, the fact that he hadn't been able to convert in the past. Um, and especially playing against Rory, you know, in terms of for the lead, obviously in two different um, pairings, but yeah, I think cool, cool to see Larry win because he's been around. If you had a couple of good then, tournaments, he did say he records he's playing his best golf of his life, but um yeah, he's my guy, dude, and and with a big dub. Has he won since the Open? I, I, I don't know. I don't, if if he has, yeah, I don't think he's. I mean, I think, maybe one or two, but he's. Yeah, I think he's maybe won once on the PGA Tour since it, but nothing major. But yeah, you know, I must say, I mean, looking at Larry going down the back nine, I think everyone kind of had the feeling like you know Larry's going to win it. It's going to take something magical for someone to catch up here at this point, and and you know, like everyone's like he knows his course so well. This is his this is his game, and I'm going to say. Again, he had a chance to win it a lot sooner than what he actually did. Like, he, he won it by, I think it was one shot at the end of it, but I think he could have won it by three, uh, especially on that back nine, because it's quite easy. The, the last stretch of holes, you expected to make birdie, and he kind of daffed his drive a little bit. And I was like, okay, on the 17th, I was like, okay, he's gone out right, got a little bit of a lucky break, shot in, you know, laid up, made his, made his uh, par there. And I think he could have, could have won it a lot sooner. I mean, if you made birdie, birdie, it's a lot more difficult for Rory to try and catch from there. But yeah. And I must say, Rory also did great just to put himself in the position that he did. You know, we seeing him going for the eagle putt to to catch up for the playoff. It would have been I, I was rooting for that. But. We we definitely are seeing Rory play some of his best golf. Yeah, I think he's playing the best golf of his life. Mm. Bar maybe when he was back with Titleist in twenty fifteen when he had that or twenty fourteen when he had that scream over yeah. But I think since then, this is definitely the best golf he's played. He's just been, I mean, a long time. I don't think there's been a sort of tournament really, or major tournament, a big tournament rather than a major tournament, where he's just not been in the running. You know, he's always been in and around there. Uh, he's carding good scores. 
you know, and it's it's now basically if his putter works, he wins. Yeah. You know, where he's up there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and John Rahm coming in there to uh, T2. Uh, Gooch, uh, unfortunately, from a South African perspective, we have to go all the way down to T23 for Justin Harding with 10 under. Frustrating, isn't it, that we're not really seeing the South Africans pitch up this year? I mean, we had Louis who was was floating around the majors last year, but um, yeah, I haven't really seen a. Um, we, we, I, think, I think we're still waiting for the next generation to really yeah. come good. I mean, you've got to give it to Tristan Lawrence. Mm. I mean, he's he's flying the flag high for South Africa this year. Last year, I think it was more so Burmester doing quite nicely with his two wins last year. But I think Tristan Lawrence has definitely been the best South Africa out there, best South African out there so far this year. I mean, I don't know if you guys have seen Live Tour, but South Africans have been doing pretty well on there. <laughs> So, yeah, no, other than live tour, I think yeah, we've been a little bit quiet on, on every other front. So I think basically what we're saying is that the PGA Tour and DP World Tour purses are too small. Yeah, they are. Go, the, go. Moment, the moment the money is there, the South Africans. Yeah. Go, 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 go slap a $4 million um, winning, winning, winner there and, and, and watch the guys the guys go for it. Yeah. Um, other South Africans were George Kutsir, T32, over Becker, T42, uh, Walters at T57, Fantonda at 68, Norris at 72. And those were the only South Africans that made the cut. Um, Gary Kicho still not really following up the season that people keep expecting from him. Gray Stone, um, Burmester. Uh, Fichart, Thurston Lawrence, Richard Stern, all missing the cut. Yeah, Gary Kiko is a crazy story. I mean, the guy gets this weird exemption into the PGA. I think it was some call from Solwyn Nathan or something like that that got him there to replace Vilko. Does so well, like in the in this first tournament, everyone's like, "This is the kid," and then nothing, nothing, nothing. Like every time you want him to do well, he's nowhere. Like not even. Like, as you say, like, did he even make the cut, Steve? No, he no, didn't make the cut. Didn't even make the cut. Mm -hmm. Like, this was someone that everyone was tipping to be, like, our next, next big South African. Yeah. They're like, this is the next Louis and all that. And he has been so bad that it's, that it, like, it <laughs> sucks to watch. <laughs> the Barros isn't holding any no, <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just he's been so bad for what he was tipped to be. You know, everyone was like, this is our next big South he, African. He's won on the PGA. Yeah, he's he won has. on the PGA. He's got three wins in the European Tour, two wins in the Sunshine Tour. And yet his high, and then if you look at his results, T64 in PGA, T47 in the Open Championship, missed the cut for Masters, missed the cut for the US Open. Yeah, I'd love to know what's going on though. Like, why is he playing such bad golf? You know, this is why we need to, we might have to get him on the pod sometime. Well, you know, it's always, it's always interesting. You know, do you think that he's playing bad golf or do you think he's playing, you know, the sort of golf that where he is in his game and he just had that stretch? Sometimes you he, peak at the right time. Yeah, right? and you do and you, and, and you get, and also you peak at the right tournament. You yeah, know, yeah. we were talking about, I think it was a Sean Norris who, who, who suddenly won that, um, won the state city and suddenly won the order of merit. All of a sudden this guy's playing US Open, gets a live contract and bang, 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 bang. I mean, he cried after winning state and championship because it was so important to his family from a financial perspective. And yeah, but then all of a sudden he's playing majors, he's playing and live and, and his pockets are, are well lined. Yeah. Um, off, off the back of it. Um, so yeah, I mean the next so, so PGA Championship sort of the big the big one now as we sort of now move into the Europe uh, some of the European season. Um, should we talk about let's just talk about Sunshine Tour and then we'll go to um, the President Cup teams because I think that's going to be a a fun discussion. A tough one. Um, but uh, we were down, down in Selborne and a first win for Fanzale. Um, Ross, did you watch? Did you manage to watch much of it? Or, I don't even know if it was actually been broadcast. It was broadcast too. Was it? No, no, it wasn't. wasn't. Yeah, so that's it. I'll try to, I'll try to, I'll try to flick through it and you couldn't find it this weekend. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, Yaku van Sale winning last win was six years ago. So that's big for him. And it was quite a cool battle. I mean, both Yaku and Henny, <clears throat> not two of the youngest guys on tour anymore. Um, so sort of like a little bit of a blast from the past having those two go at it. And I think it, it'll be a big thing for Yaku to have got that win under his belt. Cause I mean, we haven't heard anything in terms of him. And I know he's been plighted by injuries for the last couple of years as well. So to come back and get a win in six years, is, yeah. it'll be quite a big thing. I'm sure for him to, in terms of boosting his confidence and for the rest of the season. Yeah. And it was also quite a tough tournament in terms of the cut line. I think the cut line was very much like it was a it was a difficult one to hit. So I know some of the guys that went one under on the first day and they were sitting tenth. The next day they went level par and missed cut. Missed the cut, you know. So I think the cut line was real tough for a lot of the guys. Yeah, I think the cut line was three or two. Yeah, I think it was two under. Uh, mm, 
Two. I'd put money on it being two under, but I don't have a lot of money to no, give. Uh, <laughs> I'm not on live yet. I'm you, not on live you yet. You could have had a lot of money if if you sunk your putts. We'll we'll still we'll get um, that. But yeah, yeah, one one thing I'll that the one thing that I chatted to Mike about about the Soulborn is he was like, you know, that kind of course. The problem with it is that you can obviously play well, but sometimes it's one of those courses that he at least felt that when you play well, you don't always. Like you hit a good shot, it won't always be rewarded in the in the same manner. Like it, it can be a bit of a I want to say gimmicky course, gimmicky. but you know it's one of those where you hit good shots and you don't always get rewarded the the way you do. So I mean, he said he felt really, like he played really good golf, and he obviously just missed the cut as well. So yeah, it was two over, was two over, two under, two over. Couldn't have I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. So I'm telling you what Steve is. I, I haven't got my phone out, and I can tell you right now that our host here is absolutely <laughs> wrong. Round two scoreboard. I had to be two under. Come, pull it out. Pull it out. Unless 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 my one is showing different, it's got cut round two and everybody's there's three over. We'll have to I'll have to do an audit on this <laughs> because I can't get in uh, all of a sudden I'll have to try to prove a point for the next 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, whatever I'll yeah. tell you what it is now. Make sure no one the, the lack of faith here is is, is I'm quite so tough. Cool. But know, anyway, you know, I'm 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 an accredited journalist. You know, no, I, mean, I know. I've, I've got I've got my I've got, I've got a code of ethics that I have to buy to. I can't lie, dude. <laughs> Me and Aid Lincoln cannot tell any lies. So while well, Ross well, Ross verifies my 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 facts, um, <laughs> Sunshine Tour is very much going into. Unless I'm looking at the wrong tour here, um, which could very well be the case, actually. <laughs> You're wrong, dude. So, Ross will, Ross will do an audit there. I want to try, because I was trying to get to the next one, which is um, San Lemire this weekend. And yeah, Volcom Origins of Golf. Um, 1.1 mil is on is on the line here, um, as Ross finds out our, our, our Salborne story. But um, quite, a, quite a few uh, tournaments lined up. I mean, and, and, and what we, the reason I want to bring into Ross is because we talked about the fact that he's leading the family down now. Cousin going quite well this past weekend. He's still trying to Indeed. order the thing, yeah. Ross is not hard yet, dude. One under was the cut. Line. One under. One under. Okay. One under missed. So it would have been two under. Okay. Got in. Yeah, okay, well, there we go. Thank so you. I'd like you to say, Matty, you were right. <laughs> you know I can see the faith in your eyes as you said that to Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, that's yeah. where I felt the pain. Yeah, because didn't he say he doesn't tell lies? He's a professional journalist. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> a couple big terminology were thrown out there. Yeah. You know what? We don't have to release this, eh? This is the last thing. We can see this is going to get an edit. Yeah, we're going to get a classic We're going to be talking about such until all of a sudden. And the reason it's cut. Well, there we go. My apologies. So it was so it was too under. Was... Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Your cousin, eh? Yeah. The real McClatchy. Yeah. The one that can actually play golf. Yeah. The one that we tried to get into this podcast, but he couldn't because he's actually got a real job and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Well, you <laughs> can't get either of them on, but one is a real job, the other one doesn't. What are you saying? Because I've been away so much. Yeah, true, true, true. So, so what the difference is you have you haven't been away like doing yeah. anything productive. No. So what did your cousin have to say? Did you speak to him at all? I haven't spoken to him yet. Oh, 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 no, the, guy, like, the, guy, I, the guy who gets what I believe is 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 a career high yeah. T six. Yeah. And you don't even like pop the, the the cousin the message. Well done. Not even I, like a little emoji. I, I do. Just haven't spoken to him yet. <laughs> hasn't progressed. Or, 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 what he's actually not telling us is that he sent him like four different messages and he's being blue ticked. Yeah, that's the real case, yeah. His cousin's like, you haven't spoken to me in like six months. Don't try and be that guy now. <laughs> um, but yeah, playing some really good goals, heading in the right direction, up into the top 50 of the order of merit now. I think it's 44th. Which, as we said, is quite important because that 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 would put him into... into the, sanctions, yeah. So the Nedbank will be on the cards for him. Nedbank, Afro-Asia, Joburg Open... Those all start to come into play, which is big. Yeah, you just want to be top fifty in South Africa, and then you, then you chatting yeah, business. Doors start opening from there. So I should be top fifty in like my household. <laughs> I would hope so, because there's only like seven. Hey, dude. <laughs> so if you're not, you're doing something seriously wrong. Well, I am doing something seriously <laughs> wrong. But um, yeah, I mean, we spoke about this a little bit in the car on the way here. He's sort of twenty five years old. I'm very keen. Hopefully, to be able to get him on in the next in the next couple of weeks or or something. But um, Probably quite an important year career-wise because you sort of get to your sort of late twenties, and then if you're not getting T6s and not in the top fifty, not playing co-sanction, 
it's probably that sort of time where you have to start thinking, am I, am I yeah. cut up for this? Do I continue? How long do I continue pushing for this sort of, yeah. this sort of career? Yeah. So it is, I definitely think it's important, yeah, especially after being on the tour, then having go, having to go back down and earn your way back onto the tour. Yeah. Coming back onto the tour. I think that first year back on is very important. And it seems to be paying off having to have worked for his card back and worked on his game and everything. It's now heading in the right direction, which is really cool to see. Yeah. And hopefully long may it last. Yeah. If it doesn't last, at least we can get, get, get a much better golf onto the podcast. We can yeah. replace you. <laughs> and we don't have to change anything on like any contracts. We just change the first name. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Um, and then, but yeah, so we were talking, you know, it's quite, quite a few tournaments in a row now. Um, San Lumiere, um, Origins of Golf this weekend. Um, St. Francis is coming up, which is yeah. always, which is always a good watch. And I think probably that it's all kind of roads lead to, to Ned Van Golf Chat. Yeah. First time we're going to have it since one. 2019, 19, I, think I think it was. Yeah. Um, Did we even have it in 19, was it 18? The last 19 time? was the last normal year we had before COVID. Yeah. So, so just on that note, before you really climb into the, the details, if you go look back on the 2019, I think it was Tommy Fleetwood one. Yeah. If you go look back on the winning putt he made, you'll see a guy there in the chairman's box seat with his eyes cross-eyed, and that would be me. I was about, <laughs> I was about Same fifty. Thousand yeah, brandies deep. It, I was about good fifty brandies down. Myself and Ricky Hughes were there watching cross-eyed, and it was insane to be at that Ned Bank Golf Challenge. Just a different level. Well, yeah, I was there in twenty fifteen, um, and it's. It was my first live golf event, and it's it's, it's a phenomenal it's event. Cool, it right? really yeah. is really cool. Um, I think we do need to get there this year. Yeah, we will. So start putting in the leave. If anyone wants to flick us a, a flat or a house or something to stay in for the weekend, it'll be it'll be highly appreciated. Yeah. So although Steve was saying we should go on a business trip, I said there'll be no work done. Yeah. There'll be plenty of work done. <laughs> we'll be networking. <laughs> Yeah, having, maybe, a, ha having a beer with the players with is networking. The beer, networking with a beer tent. Right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, maybe Steve can get us some media accreditation to that. Yeah. Oh, we, we can operate. We can operate. You, tell you what, you guys find the accommodation, I'll sort ourselves. Okay. Start. You guys, you find a house, I'll sort everything else. Out. How does Jeez. the tent work? <clears throat> I mean, as long as it's not like in Petersburg, I'm going to be eaten. <laughs> Edge to the excitement. Oh, I suppose the, the casino never, they never, never closes. So we just, no. we just don't, we Make just sure. stay there. Yeah, we're going to play slots, like 20 cent slots. Yeah. yeah. And we can take, take turns sleeping under the, the blackjack table <laughs> or on the blackjack table. Um, We're losing the plot just <laughs> Get us back to San. We'll be planning a very important golf trip. What is the time? You know, because I've lost the plot. Yeah. Well, hey, listen, it's 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 a Monday. It's I need a holiday. Ross is always on holiday. This is the part of it. I need a holiday. Ross is permanently on holiday. And now I'm, I have to live in my life through Ross at the moment because he gets to go away and do and do fun things. Um, but yeah, so Sandy this weekend, Ross, uh, any, 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 any player that you want to be seeing doing well, any, anybody worth watching out to your ass down trying to a correspondent? Albert, Fe oh, Albert Fenter again <laughs> this last week. We really are losing the block here. The way you said that, you can, we took that off. Albert Fenter. <laughs> Albert Fenter, another good week this last week in Sandy Mia. Telvon. <laughs> Oh, no. late. <laughs> Another good week in Salvorn, extending his lead at the Order of Merit. I think he's playing really, really good golf. So I definitely think he'll be one to watch again. Hopefully another top 10 for my cousin, that'll be quite nice. Um, and then I think it'll be a big week for the likes of Louis, Louis Albertus and Yaku Prinsloo. And then I know Yaku missed the cut this week, and I think he's third in the Order of Merit. So I'm sure he'll be looking to bounce back and try and chase Louis down and Albert down. Yeah, and 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 just just deviating slightly, did you see that um, Dylan Idea has progressed to the next stage of Q School in, on the European Tour, DP World uh, Tour? I have not. Mm, I so I saw the Sunshine Tour posted that that he's progressed to the next stage of Q3 over there. So quite cool. That's cool. Um, because yeah, you're not currently playing down here, um, but supposed to be a very talented, very up and coming golfer. So yeah. interesting to see that some of the names that we haven't seen down here are actually over overseas trying to. To earn some European tour cards and stuff like that. But um, uh, you yeah, one man I am excited to see have a go at Sandomir is uh, the good old Cockstar. I don't know if you know. Good old Michael Cock. He put out another video. Wasn't happy with his performance this week. Well, he missed the cut. So. Yeah, he missed the cut. So you reckon Sandomir is, is going to get it. And uh, another one that I enjoy to watch is that Yubin Jung, again, our top uh, yeah. 
Q school qualifier still. I think he also missed the cut again, the cut, Steve. Yeah. He is absolutely struggling on the Sunshine Tour. And it is, you know, as I said in the last part, it's one guy that I would have said we must watch this season is, is Yubin Jung. And I see some of his preseason results. And my goodness, can he not perform on the Sunshine Tour? It's like the Garrick Higo, you know, just all this potential. Just can't get it over the line. You know, when we get him on the podcast, you're going to be the one that has to approach him. <laughs> no, there's going to be a couple. There's going to be a couple guys that are not are going to be happy with me. But can... <laughs> we, might, we might have to excuse you for that evening. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's provides. I'll come on, but he can't be. There. But it, if it means anything, like I see there's potential in the guy, but he just can't perform on the Sunshine Tour. I don't know what's wrong with him. He did so well in Q School. He's done so well in so many of the preseason stuff that I've seen him do. And my goodness, it's miscut after miscut after miscut. A highest qualified player on the Sunshine Tour from the rookie. Uh, leagues or let's call it whatever they are but um yeah just can't can't get it over they can't even make a cut at this point which is uh, pretty disappointing i'd love to see him do well so we can finally watch him on tv i think when we get Yubin and garrick on the podcast we need to get that bag out of here because the barrels might catch a forearm to the shin that's, what, that, that's why i'm leaving it in here. <laughs> we are, we're gonna we're gonna see gary go forearm across the across the route <laughs> And, and, I, and, and I'm in for it. And I'm in for it. It's probably be his could... best shot of the whole season. <laughs> hey, there it is. There it is. That's Gary played like Chronicle's son. Hey, careful, yeah. careful. You're going to accept Gary. And he's going through a lot. His son's busy selling half his fortune. That's actually another thing to talk about. The yeah. Gary, the, the, the Gary player yeah. family is all over the show at the moment for, you know. Do you know what, this, do you know what, do you know what kills me? Is, the, is, is when his son came out and said, just because my dad won these things doesn't mean it, they belong to him. <laughs> So he oh. is sitting there firmly believing that he has in every right to sell all the old stuff. Like when really you say that, that, yeah, he said, he literally said, just because my dad won, that doesn't mean that they belong to him. But I think his son is a bit crazy from yeah. what I, I mean, like I've never had a conversation that, with the guy. That, that, you know, yeah. Everyone knows the guerrilla marketing that he did with the, the <laughs> yeah. golf balls at the it, Masters. It all went downhill from there. That, yeah. that, 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 that was, it, it was, was so <laughs> shameless. It was so shameless. Yeah. It was, exactly. It wasn't even like Trying, subtle. Yeah. It's like, here are the golf balls. They're in your uh, face. And, like, And there was literally, you never heard anything about it before the Masters, but that happened at the Masters. And then since then, every two months or so, there's something about the players and his son trying to do something yeah, that he really shouldn't be doing. I think he's a bit of a weasel, it looks like. <laughs> I mean, when he, when he practiced that line that just because my father won them doesn't mean his. I don't know. You're not thinking right yeah. though. How do you say that at night? Like you must look in the mirror, you go to bed, you're saying, oh, what I said was correct. Or... Well, I think he needs to come to the podcast. Yeah. yeah. I think you need be... an explanation. So yeah. a, he's like the live golf of everything, of golf. <laughs> he's like the opposition to golf. Yeah. But it's just, I just, I just can't believe that. Imagine being Gary, you're over there in the US, you're, you're sorted. Next thing you know, you get a message and somebody's like, do you know that you're like suddenly selling your stuff, eh? And then <laughs> it's like not even like it's a joke. Like your son's literally like back at home going, right, boys, money, money. Do you money, think money. we could get our hands on a green jacket or a claret jug for the studio from him? Send him a message yeah. there and be like, well, since she's selling stuff, yeah. don't you mind I would, I, would, we... I would have the nation. Yeah. <laughs> How about, yeah, I mean, imagine, and, and, and we could have Gary Play's jacket. We could have yeah, a little claret jug. Yeah. This is actually on the other, on the, yeah, we actually now condone what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> We're actually fully behind you, as, as, as long as he gives it to us for free. Yeah, no, 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 100%. If he wants to charge it, then we're back on Gary Players. So. Yeah. yeah, but for now, you know, if, if, if we stand to benefit, we're all on you. Um, we can put some golf balls here, yeah, just angle them at all the various cameras. It just that photo, I think it's, it's actually almost iconic, you know, just, just standing yeah. there at the tee off of the Masters. You've got these like legends of the legends of the legends, and you're there classic yeah. and and he does it and it's as the barrel said it was shameless every time the camera moved he moved he like follows the camera i mean it's like <laughs> like, like like right now like whilst we're having a podcast just yeah there and then just <laughs> there no it's <laughs> mental um so yeah i think I, I i think that's 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 definitely something we should look look at getting maybe we could host both of them yeah, yeah. and they could sort it out here on we the might podcast have, and, we'll we'll one and a five on it. yeah <laughs> Yeah, we can see which is no. We can do a four one and a putt and see which hurts more. Look, celebrity boxes in at the big thing at the moment, and I hundred percent will be betting on Gary to 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 win that fight if they were trained a lot. I, yeah, that, that is so fit. That yeah. match fits me. I'll ever be. Gary's doing his ten thousand sit ups a day and running up and down his bloody mountain. Yeah, he's he, yeah. No, he's, it's it's going to you know, when when we go down quickly. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> so I think we need to show that idea. 
Um, we've got, I think we've had a lot of good ideas for content. I know you say we lose the plot chip, but I think we've come with quite a lot of, yeah. of, of cool ideas. I think watch the space. Um, <laughs> things of things that we probably don't want to watch. The President's Cup. Yeah. Oof. It's probably a good thing it's in the US and it's not during a time where we would have no excuse not to watch it because yeah. that US team is... Lethal. Dis it's disgusting. I it, mean, the, the players that qualified were, were, were one thing and then the, the, the picks came in. Yeah. It's honestly strong enough to be a Ryder Cup team and take on a fully-fledged European to a European team, uh, without a doubt. It could be stronger than their Ryder Cup team. Yeah, exactly. I, that's what I said to yeah, Steve. It, the other it, day. It, could, it probably would have beaten their Ryder Cup team. Yeah, It's that good. And, like, it's crazy. Do you think... Oh, no, I love, I, yeah, I go again. I'm going to bring the, no, the, I, the I, I, narrative. I genuinely think there is... There is I, I, I think you've got every right to go down there. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, the, the real question is, is has Liv affected this President's Cup team, you know, from... Well, 100%. The Europeans are dead because they lost their captain. The, the, team, the, the international, international team is finished. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's actually ruined the event because yeah. usually this is something like you can, you have something to look forward to and like there's hope. Look, it's not a Ryder Cup, but it's the next big thing. It's yeah. next we, big we had Ernie and Tiger taking on, you know, having a shootout down yeah. in, in, in the Gary Play all those years ago. So the, the President's Cup's had some amazing moments. But yeah. this has got to be one of the, like the lamest looking presidents' cups. Yeah, I mean, you with live with now with live, you've got the likes of Cam Smith, who is going to be the internationals poster boy, Leishman, Abram Ansa, Duncan Neiman, Neiman. Yeah, like they are seriously Louis, big all names. Those, all the South Africans are, have gone missing from the international team, and I think the US. I mean, you saw what the US did to the Europeans at the last Ryder Cup. And that European team was strong. That was a strong European team. I think the US are going to... Yeah. Listen, I, I mean, hope I get proven wrong by... Because the guys on the international team, they're not bad golfers. They're so... Hideki, Mat anything, Hideki you know? Matsuyama is a Masters champion. You yeah, can't he's take... Then, so like, he's he's going to arrive and look around like, who are you guys? I know. Yeah. So you can't take anything away from the guys that are in, on the internationals team. But I think... Like pound for pound, the US are going to tear the internationals apart. Well, let's, let's, <laughs> let's go for Team USA. Patrick Cantley, Xander Schauffele, Sam Burns, Scotty Scheffler, Justin Thomas, Tony Finau, Jordan Spieth, Colin Marikawa, Max Homer, Billy Herschel, Cameron Young, Kevin Kisner. It's actually wrong. <laughs> <laughs> they should have, like... They should be ashamed of themselves. Oh, that, are, you, are you proud of yourself? Yeah. Like, well done. Well done. For you. I mean, so, I mean of... Zach Johnson's the captain. He's probably sitting there. He needed to pick, like, a B-side. That would have been fair. I mean, it's because that team is, I mean, Patrick Cantlay is ice cold. When that guy's on form with that putter, he will, he'll honestly hold putts from a hundred feet. Yeah. He'll rocks for you. He will no. look at you in the eyes and be like, I do it on a weekly basis. Yeah. I've got no issues here. I mean, I said Matsuyama is going to get your, he's, he's, I hope his back's fine. Scotty Scheffler, best golf in the world right now, but. A substantial amount. Yeah, and then like some of the captain's picks, let me just throw back in Jordan Spieth, yeah. Colin Marikawa. And the biggest thing that we know, and like Sergio Garcia over the years has proven, when it comes to President Cup, when it comes to Ryder Cup, you take your form, you leave it at the door. Yeah. It's like a whole different thing. It's not normal golf. That's why I think you... I don't want to count the internationals out from the get-go. I'm going to because that American team... I have just, already. That, that, Amer <laughs> that American team is just way too strong. But match play is a very interesting format and it can turn quickly. I mean, I wonder how much tactics come into this because now you're seeing as an international team going, right, chaps, we are underdogs. We are playing in the US. Yeah. You know, our, our, golf, our go golfing ability, we lose this. Yeah. It now comes down to playing the man, playing the occasion. Um, I mean, this is so just very quickly, this is the international team. So it's Hideki Matsuyama. Fantastic. That's good. Tom Kim, Sun J M, Mita Pereira, Adam Scott, Corey Connors, Christian Bezade Note, our man, Taylor Pendrith, Sebastian Munoz, Cam Davis, Sewell Kim, and KH Lee. I like yeah, there's some really good golfers in there, but who's Taylor Pendrith? I've never heard of them in my life. <laughs> and this but it's that's the I, I mean I did I genuinely think it might be it maybe we maybe would be very off the mark. But I generally think there could be guys who are going to be meeting each other for the first time at this event. Yeah. And do you um, really want that for presence? Who was the second guy you said there? Uh, Tom Kim. Yeah, as I said, I must admit that that was probably the biggest thing. And, and again, you know, I, I wouldn't say I, I follow every single tour in the world, but there are just there are names there that you don't really know. I'm not, they're not household names. No. And they're actually compared to the names of the US team. 
Yeah, and, and the names you would have had if it was Willard Cole. Yeah. If you had Cam Smith in there, Jacob Neiman, you know. Changed the dynamic you completely. Know, yeah, you had. But as I said, you can't cut out. There are some good golfers on there, and I think they'll be able to hold their own against the American team. But I do think overall. Well, what do you think would be a good result for them? To take them into the weekend and, and, and still be live on the last day? I suppose. To to pull out now would probably be a <laughs> to have, course of action. To have a chance to win on Sunday. Yeah. And if it means having to win all 11 singles. And isn't that, isn't that, I mean, isn't it sad for the event because you don't yeah. want to, I mean, they win on Saturday. You sit there going, well, well, what's the point? What's the point? You, yeah. You're going to go on Sunday to watch what? A dead rubber. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know people like putting with their wedges yeah. and doing trick shots out the bunkers because it's life, like it just doesn't matter. So it's going to be interesting because I also, I think like for the Taylor Pendrith and the Tom Kim and the likes of those guys, I think it's a really big opportunity yeah. because if you can go out and Friday morning and win your first four ball against the like, it's imagine like a Taylor Pendle, imagine Schaeffler. one of them goes and beats Scotty Sheffler. Yeah. That in itself gives the rest of the international team so much motivation to be like, okay, let's, let's do this. And to put Taylor Pendrith on the scene. Yeah. No, I mean, so it, it, got, is, it is a big opportunity. Yeah. So yeah, and, and I back the Americans, but it'll be interesting. Yeah. Look, to see. From a betting point of view, you have to back the Americans, yeah. but I also think that it, you, you have something like Hideki Matsuyama, Sungjae Im, they need to walk in there going, right, we can't lose. Yeah. You know, those two need to be sitting in the team hotel saying, we've got to, like Sergio Garcia tries to do for the Ryder Cup, like you need to go up there and you've got to be brave as well. You've got to yeah. be willing to say, I'll go out first tomorrow. Yeah. I'll go, I'll go pay you the way. You guys can look at the score, but I'm going to be ahead after the first hole. Yeah. You've got to go out there and you. say, like as Matsuyama, you've got to go out and say, I'll take Scotty on. Yeah. And I'll beat him. Yeah. I'll take, line up anybody. Yeah. Put 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 Scheffler and um, Patrick Cantley in the same in the same pairing. I don't care. Yeah. I'll I'll I'll, bo I'll box anybody there. You've got to and you've got to really like go in and 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 assert authority. And I think that I think the internationals need to be ugly. Mm. Like when they go out and play that first match on Friday morning, they need to go out there and they need to fist bump each other and they need to just like get the putt, Americans make the putts. And, no, don't concede holes and be ugly. Yeah. No, yeah, I think you have and to just try and get in the Americans' heads as much as possible just yeah. to try and create the tiniest advantages wherever they can. Just pull a ship or just walk across the line. Yeah. yeah that's just, it. just walk onto the first team. Don't press, kick, press kick Scotty Sheffler off the tee box. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I will. One day, just, just drink a beer, <laughs> smash it part of them. Yeah. Let's go. I will say if I'm, an inter if I'm one of the internationals, this would be my approach. And it's certainly not in the spirit of the President's Cup. But I would be thinking of myself out there because... <laughs> As you say, if you are one of those low names, you could beat Scotty Scheffler and get yourself a name. Like, let's be realistic. Yeah. If I'm walking out there, I'm saying, as a team, are we going to win this? No. Or are you going to take a, a, a player approach and be like, I'm never going to get this exposure. Are you going to go out the 4,000 logos on your shit? Yeah, going? no, just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, it, but exactly that. I'd, I'd honestly be worrying about myself and say, you know what, for the sake of this, if I win my match, I could get a bit of a name, yeah. you know, a bit of a boost to my brand and my name. That's what I'm saying. Is, is it likely we're going to win... No, nah, nah. look, it's a, it's, 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 it's a low risk high reward. No yeah, one's, yeah. you're not expected to do well. You're Whereas the Americans have all the expectation. Yeah. Yeah. So you get dominated. People would be like, well, what did you expect? But yeah. someone, I mean, somebody like that goes and beats, literally, that's the thing that the American they team is so anybody. stacked. They could meet everybody. Yeah. Yeah. It could be literally anybody. And they'll be like, hectic. And like, you know, the other thing that I think the internationals are going to struggle with is the depth. Like, I mean, because on Friday you're going to have four balls for this morning or afternoon. The Americans can send out a stack four ball team that is rock solid, that has, mm -hmm. and then go out in the afternoon and completely change their team. Yeah. And send out a rock solid team for foursomes. Whereas Matsuyama has to hit every single goal shot. Yeah. Much, any goal shot he can hit, he has to hit over the weekend. And that's <clears> another <throat> thing that could play into the Americans' favor is like exhaustion. Yeah. Matsuyama is probably going to have Matsuyama, Siwoo Kim, Scott. They probably each got probably, like four physios on hand. They're like, probably going to have to play every single game of the weekend. They will. I don't think it's a party. I think they will. They literally, I mean, you're going to be sitting there saying, Matsuyama, you have to, we need you to play yeah. every single game. Which again single thing. will play into the American side. But we love an underdog. So yeah. it's not, it's not right off the, I think, I think a couple of watch alongs will, will, will definitely probably have to happen over next weekend. Um, we'll Back look at your times. Uh, get some beers out and do a bit of a watch party. Could be quite, could be quite a scene. Yeah. Um, speaking of pressure and you know big expectations and potentially life changing moments, <laughs> you had a chance to win 
a lot of money. A lot of money, like like reasonable prize money on the Sunshine Tour money. And I believe it was 25,000 Rand. It could be even 25 more. big smack of runes. So I said 25 because I think it was the last amount that I heard it at, which is the lowest it could possibly be. So at least 25,000 Rand. Yes, you could have funded this podcast for another like 10 years. But you boxed. You, well, you didn't box paid it. my salary. Yeah. So I might as well get this uh, out the way. So Kilani has jackpot holes and basically it remains the four same holes every time until someone wins. And whenever people pay comp fee, a certain amount goes to the jackpot. And the four holes were the second hole, which is a stroke. I was playing off of an 11 on 85%. So I'm going to say it's over 11. Um, the fourth hole, which is a par three, which is a stroke nine, I believe. The 10th hole, which is a par four, which is a stroke four, and it's a real tough hole. And then you end off on the 15th, which is a par five, stroke 18. And you have to basically make 12 points on individual stable foot on those holes, but combined. So however you do it, you do it, right? Which is net birdie for every hole. So I go on the second hole, and I know the jackpot holes. So this is always in my head whenever I play there, I go... I make a four for two on the second hole. The third hole, I go and I make a three for three. So I'm like, okay, that's quite lacquer. Tenth hole, I have a very rare opportunity at birdie on the tenth. And I two putt for the four for three. And then I get to the par five, which is a stroke 18. And I say to my mates, I'm like, you know what? It's a, um, it, I've got to make an eagle here. So I might as well just go for it. Baby draw around the corner. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful shot. Like, even better, even yeah, better, yeah, yeah. <laughs> even better. And uh, I get to my ball and everyone plays because obviously I'm the furthest up the fairway. <laughs> <laughs> had to drop that in there. Uh, and I got a six iron in, flag at the front, and I hit the shot. And I said to my mate, you know, it's, it's going to take three magical shots to do this. I've never made an eagle. I hit one, hit the drive, and then hit that six iron. And it just baby draw in as well. And I must have left it, call it no more than three meters from the hole. All right. The caddy that's with us, he's there. He's like, you know, mate, I've been here since 1918. He's like, you've got talent. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he's like, you've got real talent. And you were like, just wait. It's <laughs> like, I was like, J the job ain't done. <laughs> just wait. This job ain't done. So I'm going. Then I, I, like, you can kind of feel the energy. Like everyone's like, he's gonna do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like this is his moment. You have like to do it. You get these moments in life where it's like, it takes such magic to get there. And I was like, this is it. And I, I wasn't even nervous. I was like, this is gonna go in. Like I was like. I did the whole read and everything like that. And I got over the putt and I've got it on camera and everything. I, and what hurts the most is that it never stood a chance. <laughs> <laughs> so it was offline. So no, I, I think I had the read right. I think I had everything right. Every single thing about the putt was right. The read. You, you knew what you had to do. I knew what I had to do. And the pace was correct. The pace was right on, right on the money. The line was on the money, but I pushed the putt. So I pushed it right off the off the roll and watching it hurt because I knew it was never going to go in. Right street, wrong address. Yeah. So everything everything other than hitting the putt that I should have usually have hit was right. And if you thought my woes ended there, it didn't because that was my only it would have been my first ever eagle, and it would have been a significant amount of money. And it only got worse because uh, then end up on the eighteenth. And I'm now going for my first time breaking 80. And I'm like, Jesus. At a past 71. At a past 70. 70, sorry. And I know that's controversial, but that's all <laughs> slope ratings and course ratings and handicap ratings about the difficulty of the course that I'm at, you know, later. But I come down there. Again, I did everything I need to. I hit three wood down the center, pitching wedge, just at the back. And to be fair, I left a bit of a knee knocker that I wish I hadn't. But I then proceeded to miss that next putt again. So I had two real important putts of the day, and they cost me dearly, dearly. Like, like Rory, do when the, when the putt is working, it's it's all thing. But the putt me and Rory, work. same player, bro. same player. But yeah, I missed out on twenty five k. It was it was a different experience to what I thought it would be. I thought I would be real nervous. I thought, but I was, you know, like calm in the face of adversity. And I thought this was going to go in. Like I can still, you know, and, uh, this is hand on heart. I can still see the, the ball rolling into the hole in my head. I know exactly what it should have done. I can still see it here and it haunts me at night. Um, but you, you can't win them all and I have no doubt that I, I will be back. You, well, win, you win some, you lose most, huh? Yeah, that's cool. You win some? <laughs> <laughs> what? That's been asked, yeah. I've yet to take a dub. Um, 
And you haven't played in a while. Nope. So are we Not playing? When are we playing? I need to do some work. No, you don't. You don't do any work anyway. No, I do. Um, yeah, I also have I played... I think I haven't played since the last podcast. Because um, I think I'd already played CMR when I... Yeah, when we had the podcast. So yeah, yeah. we I think me and Ross are slacking a little bit on the on the golfing thing. Thankfully, our our new golf pro is is, is stuck stacking it up. Um, but hopefully, we'll have a, a bit more sort of content to to push up. The now we're back in the studio. Um, I think that we've got a bit of uh, momentum. So hopefully, we'll try and do a couple of challenges and get some stuff on the young YouTube going. Um, gentlemen, nice to see you guys in the same room at the same time. Yeah, and uh, nice to be in a. In our new home, which uh, yeah, hopefully I think we're going to try and do we'll a bit of decorating for the next one. Try and get some more some more golf stuff in here, um, and hopefully get a few guests in here as well. But yeah. uh, chaps, as always, have a good pleasure. Day. And to all the viewers, and listeners, and everybody out there, please do smash like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel. Let us know if you've got any topics you want us to cover. Um, any ideas for videos and stuff like that? We are very open to feedback, um, even if it is negative. Um, Opinions on the Barrow supporting Reed. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's controversial. Yeah, right? put yeah put 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 your debarra slander in the in the comments, yeah. <laughs> and we will see you guys hopefully in about a week. 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 In about a week.